economist, I'm an entrepreneur, I'm an educator, and uh, I'm a fledgling. Um, today, Wale, the founder of Point, asked me here to talk about robotics and IoT, Internet of Things. Um, I'm not the most qualified person to address the topic, but I'll try anyway. Um, I'll start by talking a bit, a bit about my personal history. Back in 2012, uh, I had a desire to start an organization that um, helped young people how to code um, through robotics. Uh, this is related to my overall topic, robotics and IoT. Um, that's my own history. The organization is called um, the Experience Robotics Academy. Back in 2012, we took about uh, 40 kids from around the country, 17 different states, brought them to Lagos, uh, and we taught them things over the course of five weeks. They here slept, they ate, they worked together. We flew in instructors to teach them, um, and we were able to transform a number of lives. Next slide, please. Um, you might recognize some of our alumni. This is uh, Jamima Asunde, she's an actress now. Next slide. You might recognize this guy as well. Uh, his name is Samson Gaudi from Portaco. Um, he's part of the Scratch team. He participates in For Loop as well. And recently, in the picture that you see in the lower right-hand corner, um, we had him uh, as he was on his way out to speak in San Francisco at the Google conference. Um, these are just a few of the alumni from our program that we're proud to say that we had a hand in helping them change their lives. Next slide, please. Five-week residential program, over 100 graduates between 2012-2014, support from Mr. Switch and uh, Shell, um, hosted in Lagos. We've been, we've won many awards. Um, it was a great program. Next slide, please. So we decided to take our talents uh, this January to Rwanda, where we, or where I helped them establish the very first um, robotics boot camp in the country called the Makers Robotics Academy Rwanda. Um, we worked with about 40 students there as well, with our largest bank, Bank of Kigali. Three weeks, flew in program. Again, many lives transformed. Next, next slide, please. It was competitive, and um, on the last day, we had a lot of fun watching them demonstrate their robots on live television, in front of their peers, and other attendees. Next, please. And then there's NEXA, the program that we're running currently, where we train uh, post-university students on topics such as web development and help them get into the technology industry. We have um, a few dozen graduates started about a year ago, and so far, so good. We're looking forward to more growth, more graduates, more impact in the coming year. So what is robotics? Uh, next slide, please. A robot is a, it's a machine that you can program to accomplish various tasks automatically. Next slide. And what is IoT? Internet of Things. Next slide. Connected devices embedded in everyday objects. Um, these devices can sense their surroundings or sense things about their surroundings and share that data on the cloud where it can be accessed by their devices, databases, computers, and that data is used to make decisions. Next slide. So for the sake of my presentation, we can consider these two things to be the same, robotics and IoT. Next slide. Because the key is data and automation. Once you have all the data, how does that data enable you to do things automatically? In human history, um, we've always been able to accomplish exponentially more than before when we've been able to collect more information and then use that information, right? Imagine what we would have done before the computer, the advent of the computer. Um, all of our records would have been written on paper. If you have population of a million people, and you're recording transactions of a million people on paper, how do you analyze the data and find trends 
and try to identify patterns and make decisions based on those patterns, you can't, it's impossible. We needed a computer, you needed a spreadsheet. Um, you needed to be able to visualize these things so you can see something beyond. The data was always there since the beginning of time, but only in recent human history have we been able to decipher that and, and make use of it. And before, we've been able to innovate more, create new technologies, do more with less. Robotics and IoT take this to another level. So now instead of us needing to analyze the data on our own, we're able to program robots and computer systems that can automatically take that data, compare it across the universe of other devices and, and other bits of data, and make decisions without us even thinking about it. Next slide. And ultimately, it ends up making life easier. I can give an example. I have a couple of examples here um, in my presentation. Uh, I wear Apple Watch. Um, many of you wear fitness trackers or smart watches of some sort. These devices, they monitor your location. They know whether you're running or whether you're walking. Um, they know what your heartbeat is, working out. All of this data can now live on your phone or on a website somewhere. The algorithms on that website or on that phone, they can tell you whether you haven't been active in such a long time. My, uh, my watch b bothers me about every hour to stand up um, and to take a walk so that I can stay somewhat fit. Um, before, I would have had to rem remember those things. It would have taken a lot more discipline um, and willpower to do some of these things, but now, Without me, I, I, you know, I don't even remember downloading that app, that particular app, but it's there now. Um, and now I'm standing up and walking around and being fit, um, having less willpower, less discipline. Um, and that's just uh, one example. Let's look at the luxury industry. Um, just a few weeks back, I was privileged to travel to the Netherlands. Next slide, please. And rather Holland, and I stayed in Amsterdam at a hotel called Citizen M. Um, this was a mind-blowing experience, uh, maybe because I live in Lagos, uh, but the features of this particular hotel, I think, are very indicative of what the future of IoT and robotics is. Um, next slide, please. First of all, when we got to the hotel, um, there was no one there to greet us, no one. You just walk in, placed or made a reservation online. You walk up to one of those kiosks, one of those computers. You type in your code, scan your receipt, type in your name, find your reservation, and then like an ATM, stick in your card. No human in this process. Out of those kiosks drops a key card that we're all familiar with. If you have a guest, two key cards. You take the key card, you put it back on the kiosk, it programs it, now you have access to a room in that building. You haven't talked to anyone. Next slide. You get to your room, and this hotel was innovative on, on multiple, in multiple, multiple ways. Um, Prefabricated, uh, so all of the individual rooms were shipped whole, and they kind of built up the hotel like a, uh, like a stack of Legos. Um, small room. Efficient space usage. It was amazing. Now, what you don't see in this picture is the fact that all the lights, the toilet, the blinds, the curtain, the television, they were all connected. You could control all of these things independently. The room knew that you were in the room. Next slide. They gave you this app, this iPad. Every room had an iPad. On this iPad, you can dim the lights, you can turn on mood lights, change the color, you can turn on the television, choose a channel, choose a movie, you can turn the blinds, you can set a mood, and when you set the mood, the lights will blink, uh, you know, a certain sequence of colors, some music will play. It was doing all this on, on its own, right? All of it was programmed. You could have it wake you up in the morning, you could request a gentle wake up or an, an aggressive wake up, depending on what your night was like. 
I chose a gentle wake up. I like uh, the sun um, to do its job naturally. So if you choose that option, uh, back, back one slide, please. The window opens up on its own, say at 7.30 a.m. in the morning. And then the television will turn on. It'll start whispering your name. Good morning, Obina. Good morning. It's time to wake up. It's time to wake up. I'm not joking. This is, this is exactly what happened. Um, and at some point, I got up, and I shut it off, and I was just, I was just, in a, just there in amazement. You know, it's incredible. Next slide, please. That's just one example. Applied to luxury. Imagine being connected. There are already homes like this that exist all around the world. You walk from one room to another. It knows where you've gone. It can turn off the AC in that room, turn on the one in this new room, shut the windows during the day so the sun doesn't come in, all without you having to do anything. And it's optimizing maybe your energy consumption or your, your level of comfort. Who knows, whatever you program it to do. Next, please. But what is, what is the uh, relevance um, or the importance of IoT and robotics to the essentials? What about eating, growing the food that we eat? Next slide, please. So enter Bowery Farms. I'm going to call them Bee Farms because Bowery is just hard to pronounce. So Bee Farms. Right? Bee Farms is a company, a uh, startup in New York. They raised about $40 million recently. Uh, they are all about robotics and IoT in farming. Now, there are a lot of companies out there doing this today, but I think they make a great uh, holistic uh, encapsulated example. Next slide, please. Their whole premise is on vertical farming. So they're able to do a lot more on one plot of land than anyone else because they stack what they grow. So they grow leafy greens primarily right now. Um, kale, spinach, etc. Uh, the indoor, the warehouse where the farming is done has its own lighting system. Just like the hotel that I stayed in in Amsterdam, these lights can be regulated automatically on every single level, every single plant. There are cameras, sensors, water sensors, temperature sensors, humidity sensors that give you a real-time digital image of how your plants are doing, what environment those plants are existing in. Is it optimal for the, most, for the quickest growth, the largest plants in the shortest amount of time? Next. Granular monitoring and automation. Imagine you're trying to grow 10,000 heads of spinach or cabbage or kale. Before, we had sensors and cameras and computer systems that could make sense of this data. Even if you had the cameras and the sensors and you had a screen, spreadsheet with all the numbers, I mean, who in the world got 10,000 different data points or different data points times, let's say, seven, 70,000, and make sense of any of that. It's not possible, even if you had a graph. But what these robotic, these automated IoT systems allows us to do is pass off that task to a computer that can look at each and every single plant and find the optimal blend of temperature, water, humidity, um, lighting for those plants to grow. And you can on your app. So if you want big plants, you press the plant button, small plant, small button, etc. I'm kidding, but something like that. Uh, next, please. So you end up with 95% less water use. Next slide. 100 times more productivity per unit of land. It's incredible, right? Next slide. Wow. So to round out, um, you know, I know I'm supposed to talk about the future. What I did is talk about the present. Um, but I think it's, it's important to talk about how we as a people, maybe as a continent or let's say as a country, um, start to make gains in the areas of robotics and IoT and join the rest of the world in this re revolution that is happening right now under our noses. Next slide. Keys education. Next slide. So in January, um, at the robotics camp in, in, in Rwanda, um, you know, back in 2017, when we were discussing with the bank what we were going to do around you know, Q3 last year, I decided that the theme would be agriculture. 
um, primarily because it's a huge challenge or an important topic for every African country, but primarily for Rwanda because they're landlocked, um, they're small, uh, less than twice the size of Edo State. Um, so their agricultural productivity is paramount for them. They need to be able to do a lot more with a lot less. And it's also very hilly. So if you had two Edo states and it was all mountains, there's no flat land to plant anything. So ultimately, you might have to take it indoors. So the theme we chose was uh, agriculture. And what you see here is an actual robot built after three weeks um, by one of our student teams that was designed to monitor the color and then drop water droplets on the plants. Next slide, please. Next slide, yeah. So it was a huge, huge success. Um, and obviously, you know, these kids are gonna go off in the future and do amazing things. Um, you know, I'm looking forward to hearing more about that, but, but this is like, this is the dream, right? A, a place, a continent, a country where every child has access to kind of education, and that way we can be sure that over the next five to 10 years, somehow we will be participating in the robotics and IoT revolution and all the other in, you know, economic, industrial, technological revolutions that are taking place. Um, and with that, I'd like to close it. Thank you guys for listening to me this early in the morning. Um, and I hope you enjoy the rest of the conference. Thank you very much.